Welcome to The Dialogue with me, Guy Schoen, in Doha. On this episode, I'm going to meet a visionary who's revolutionising the world of sports entertainment. A champion of the MMA cage and the boardroom, today's guest is a Muay Thai master, a jiu-jitsu brown belt, and he's built Asia's largest mixed martial arts media platform with a staggering 13 billion video views on social media. My name is Chachri Siyo Tong. I'm the founder and CEO of One, Asia's largest global sports media property. Chachri's organization, the One Championship, attracts some of the toughest fighters on the planet. Its values are respect, discipline, and gender equality with a lasting emphasis on inspiring the audience. That can inspire anybody, a street kid in Manila, a doctor to become the best doctor, uh, a young woman in India to become a CEO, all over the world can be inspired by those stories. It's fair to say he's overcome huge obstacles to become one of the most powerful businessmen in the world of sports entertainment. My father went bankrupt and watching your mother cry, that really broke my heart in a million pieces. His story's amazing. Let's go meet him. In Thai language, Chatri, my name means warrior. Chatri, thank you so much for joining us uh, on the dialogue. It's such a great pleasure to, to, to speak to you. Can I start by asking you about being a hero? You talk a lot about being a hero, um, but obviously now you're a hero to millions of people around the world. Who's, who's your hero? Who inspires you? Um, I would say outside of my family um, growing up, I'd say my biggest hero uh, was Kru Yotong Sinanan, uh, the late, my late Muay Thai master. Um, and just how he lived his life, of course. Um, he produced the most number of world champions uh, in Muay Thai history in Thailand. Um, you know, he's definitely one of the most influential figures in the history of Muay Thai. Several years before he passed, he won the lottery in Thailand, $2 million, US dollars. And the next day, he announced that he was gonna give it all away. And literally there's a sea of people at, at the gym asking for a donation. He would listen to each person's story and give what he felt was the right appropriate amount. So whether it was $100, whether it was $500, whether it was $10,000, that to me symbolizes, you know, the human spirit born free. And that, that for me is my master. I wondered if you could paint a picture of your childhood for us and just explain how you got from, from where you were to, to where you are now. Sure. So when I was born in my early childhood, I lived in a well-to-do family and all the love and, and comfort and I never had to worry about anything actually until the Asian financial crisis in the 90s when my father went bankrupt. You know, we lost the house, we lost a car and overnight I just watched my family disintegrate and my father eventually abandoned the family. When I look back at my life, I'm so grateful for two things at that pivotal moment. Um, one was the fact that I was a martial artist and in me, through thousands of hours of training, years and years of training, I had a warrior spirit forged in me. So there was no way, even though I had thought of giving up, there was no way I would give up. And the second is my mother's love. You know, when I was a little boy, when I was you know, five years old, she used to always say, Chatri, you're going to grow up to help the world. You're going to grow up to help people. And I, of course, I always thought all mothers think that their kids are the best, of course. And when this whole crisis happened, my mother said the same thing. She said, Chatri, you're going to help us. You're the oldest son. And long story cut short, um, I somehow got into Harvard Business School. My mother ended up living with me in my dorm at Harvard, unbeknownst to the administration. It's a tiny little single uh, in Morris Hall, and I slept on the floor, my mother slept on the bed. It's amazing that your, your mum was there with you, physically yes, with you, yes. while she, while she well, was she had nowhere that. else to live, literally nowhere else to go. And, and of course, eating one meal a day um, while I was at school. I couldn't afford the bus or the subway. But I, again, when, when, when I look back now on that, on that journey, I, I'm just filled with gratitude. I don't know, maybe it's God or the universe's way of, of helping people to unleash their, their potential. And it's our job or duty to find it and unleash it. We were speaking earlier about how the insecurities, the dark places that, that we, we all can go to, that there's something about martial arts that can help us deal with that. And 
my own experience of a tiny little bit of, of jiu-jitsu. You know, I, I can remember yes. uh, the one competition that, that, that I did, you know, lying there with a guy mounting me, <laughs> thinking, <laughs> I've got no energy left. Yes. My coach there yes. reminded me about, you know, the whole idea of this is to try and get comfortable in those situations that are totally uncomfortable. And do you think that philosophy is something that you've seen change lots of people? Oh, most definitely. I mean, it changed my life, and I've been doing martial arts 37, 38 years. And especially when I started Jiu Jitsu, you know, again, I was already an expert in Muay Thai, and that was my comfort in a way. I'd done it so long. And when I went to Jiu Jitsu, I was a beginner, and I used to get beat up by everybody. And that's just part of the journey. But if you look deeper at what it gives you the meaning. It really teaches humility. And humility is the foundation of learning and growing in life. You have to be humble in order to learn. If you're arrogant, you've shut yourself from learning. And I try to encourage my teammates at one to think along those lines. We're all works of progress. But do you have that commitment? Do you have the humility? Do you have the hunger to be the greatest version of yourself? So today, you know, our average viewership will have anywhere from 40 to 50, as high as you know, 90 million viewers per event. And I know that we are inspiring the world. I know that we're giving hope, watching our heroes, learning about their stories, um, and understanding that all of us, all of us are works in progress. We are on a journey. And so I know, you know, and I tell our heroes every day, like I tell them, every time I talk to our heroes, I'm like, you know, what you do tonight matters. Who you are matters. The heroes still need to work on themselves you know are there are there things that that you after all you've accomplished still need to get better at wish you you were better at in some way don't ever think that i'm perfect in any way you know, i'm learning i'm growing i'm learning how to be a better ceo a better leader i'm learning to be a better martial artist you know i want to earn my black belt i'm a brown belt in brazilian jiu-jitsu i want to earn my black belt in the next couple of years um, i'm training every day but i want to be the best son i can be or brother or friend or, or whatever it is, like this mindset of always learning and growing every single day in every area of your life. I hope that, you know, your viewers are, are inspired by the story and go out and do martial arts and then they'll see for themselves, for their families and for their kids and for that um, they're able to unlock their potential and live their greatest life. It's been such an inspiration to meet you, Chatri. Thank you so much for, for joining us on the dialogue. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you.